Okay, here I'm going to go over different types of bone fractures that either you may have experienced or no, sadly no friend has experienced. Now, someone may say they fractured their bone. Well, there's a lot of different types of fractures. And if you know someone that has a fracture, you may be able to ask them more specifically what fracture that they have. Or if they describe how their bone uh, was broken, you may be able to identify exactly what type of fracture they have after the completion of this video lecture. So starting with bone fractures in general, a uh, bone fracture is simply a break in a bone. Now there's different types of fractures. Uh, two main classifications are closed or simple fractures, and these are breaks in the bone that do not penetrate the skin. Another type is called an open or compound fracture. This is where the broken bone penetrates through the skin. And do not worry, I won't show you any images of this one in particular. Bone fractures are treated by reduction and immobilization, and this allows the realignment of the bone. Now the period of time that someone may stay in a cast could depend on the type of fracture that they have and also the age of the individual. It can impact the duration uh, that they keep this hard cast on to allow for that realignment to take place. Now some different types of common fractures here. A uh, commutated one is where the bone fragments into three or more pieces. This is common in the elderly. The elderly tend to have more brittle bones, and as a result, they tend to split more into more pieces. Now, what I've tried to do with each of these is to provide a picture to kind of help you remember um, what type of fracture is occurring with the bones, and hopefully they find them a little bit helpful. Another type of fracture is called a compression fracture. The bone is crushed, like um, the strong metal weight of the hammer here. And it's common in bones that are very porous. The vertebral column, our vertebrae, are very porous, and as a result, they are subject to being crushed. A little hard to see on the x-ray, but you can see this vertebral column, um, this vertebrae, and this vertebral column is definitely crushed or smaller, not quite as tall as the one below it. Uh, again, this can be very painful, but these porous bones um, are subject to compression type fractures. In addition to that, we also have a, a spiral, which is a ragged break when the bone is excessively twisted common in sports injury. You have that kind of stop and pivot, and you get that twisting action that's occurring. Uh, that can cause a fracture here of the bone, shown by the rope here. The esophyseal, which is the ephesus, separates from the diaphysis along the esophyseal line. This occurs where car cartilage cells are dying. Um, you can see an image here, again, not very pleasant, even on the x-ray, as you can see. Uh, the reason why it tends to occur here is this is where the calcification tends to occur. And this matrix is occurring. Kind of that growth plate is located in this region. We have the picture of the chainsaw cutting is we have that kind of that almost that clear and distinctive separation uh, amongst the um, bones here at that plate there. So again, not a very uh, pleasant experience, but that's kind of what's happening with this type of fracture. Other types of fractures, we have a depressed fracture which is broken bone portion is pressed inward, a typical skull fracture. It can be very dangerous, especially with um, pressure on the brain or potential for bleeding, but this depressed fracture, like the apple in the vice here, is where the broken portion of the bone is being pushed inward, in this case. Uh, the other one here is called a green stick. This is an incomplete fracture where one side of the bone breaks and the other side bends. Very common in children, because they tend to have more flexible bones than those of adults. The reason it's called green stick is um, it refers to kind of a green twig of a tree it tends to have this kind of break. See it's pictured here. Um, this is in the winter. It tends to be a little more common in the winter where we may have a snow load. We see here we have a, one side of the bone breaking, one side of the wood portion of the trunk breaking, and the other side bending. This is referred to as a green stick and more common in children than adults who have completely ossified bones. Putting those common fractures together in a nice kind of table here, uh, I can start to add a comparison. And can you, if you saw a picture of one, could you identify it? If I gave you the word of one, could you be able to draw a sketch or identify what's going on if someone identifies that they have, for example, a green stick type of fracture? Um, so again, review these, go back to some of the pictures, and hopefully you find them helpful. Lastly, I want to go over just how the body repairs um, it's a bone fracture, which is important. Um, so this blood-filled swelling is formed initially. Hematoma, 
So heme is referring to blood. Toma is that blood-filled swelling that's initially formed where that fracture occurred. Uh, the break is splinted by fibrocartilage on both the internal and external sides to form a callus region. Then this cartilage callus is replaced by a bony callus um, slowly over time, and this is why we need to have our bones in a cast to kind of hold everything in place. Lastly, the, bone, the bony callus is remodeled to form a permanent patch. Now we'll notice the area where that initial break or fracture occurred is actually a little bit thicker than it was originally. So the body will actually rebuild and repair that bone area because it was initial point of weakness, the bony callus is actually going to make it slightly stronger in that region. However, keep in mind that you can break a bone twice because if that same area is applied with the same amount of force it was originally, while that initial site of the fracture is strengthened, both regions on the other side are now weaker in relation to that same callus that formed. So keep in mind, we want to try to avoid fractures, but if you do get one or know a friend or someone that has one, hopefully this lecture helped you more appropriately identify what is actually going on with their particular bones and how they were damaged.